Hello and welcome back to the Car Guy Coffee Podcast. This brew has been brought to you by our friends at Dealership Toolkit, M1 Data and Analytics, VinQ, and 321 Ignition. Please reach out to us if you'd like to know about any more of these solutionaries that we're brewing with. But let's get to the show. Let's brew! <laughs> car guys and car guys. Oh, I was born for success, to son. This anymore. Oh. And he's got so much more to swing. So, car guys and car gals, do us a quick favor Woo. and welcome our friend, the incredible, Woo. the one and only... Daniel, Daniel Gomez. Gomez. Woo. Woo, baby. Woo. It's time to shine, baby. Now the, hey, this, this is the same you had in the car business, right? Now's the time. This is the place and I'm your man. Woo. <laughs> That's right, bro. You bringing it and he brings the heat, folks. Did you guys hear all that fire he just dropped? That, that place was on fire. Everybody was pumped up. You were so right. Words are powerful. How you speak them and how they come out your mouth with the energy and intent is so key. And you bring those words so powerfully, man. And you make people say those words. Bring them out. Say them now and say them proud, bro. Way to go, man. I love it. You inspire me. I'm pumped up. That video got me even more jazzed up for this morning. Let's go. Woo! That's I'm right. Excited. I'll tell you what, man. Thank you for having me. I got to say that's one of the best intros I've had in a very, very long time. Maybe one of the top two or three. So, boom, baby. I love y'all, man. You know what I mean? I got to go speak here in about two hours, but you just pump me up even more. So we're going to rock and roll and make some make some waves, man. Let's do this. <laughs> Let's make some waves in this planet, man. Let's get these waves out here so people can all go some surfing. You know what I mean? Let's make it happen. So I'm excited to have Daniel here this morning. Once again, I'm Fred Arsene Subprime here. I'm here with my boy. Lou Ramirez, the car guy. That's right. And we are here with Daniel Gomez. Daniel folks. Gomez. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited because – He's right down exactly what I want to do. You know, he has that energy. He has that positivity. He has faith behind him. He understands what is coming because he's putting the work in. Faith without works is dead. And he knows what's up with that. And I appreciate him for being that guy. I appreciate him for being the business coach that he is. I appreciate him for being the human being that he is. So thank you, Daniel, for being here. Oh, man. Thank you. I'm honored to be here, man. I got two Guys are more energy than me, so I got it's going to be a heck of a show. Let me tell you, I'm excited, man. Boom, baby! Woo-hoo. Let's do this. Let's, Let's, do, this. Let's, Let's do this, bro. Let's kill this, bro. So well, you know what's going on, Daniel. There's so much that you're inspiring from all levels of yes. life, but there's something that's at core of the green part of the bean that is you, is that you're a car guy. And that's something that we definitely honor and we're excited to bring out. But folks, for those of you that do not know, he literally is the one pushing forward a shield of faith, teaching people how to wear that shield oh. and let your faith be the things that go ahead of you to conquer any fear that you may encounter. And it's something that I honor, something that, that he speaks life over anybody that he gets the chance to speak to. And uh, we're just so excited that we get the chance to glean from you. We get the chance to hear from you. And we get the chance to join our instruments with the music that you've been playing, you've been uh, championing forward for Ooh, years yeah. to come. But one thing that is definitely something that I know you have had to learn how to do and that's to apply three F's to your life uh, um, because you are doing exactly that. It. As a matter of fact, Car Guys, Car Gals, he is a best-selling author of Born to Fly, okay? I mean, are you kidding me? What other person do we need inside of the room once we get past the point of forgiveness, once we get our tools in order and we get the chance to focus, then you need to learn how to fly and come into our life and into the cafe for such a time as this as an announcement to us and to you if it's coming to us it's coming through us to you car guys and car gals that are receiving this message today it is time for you to fly and the leader with the shield of faith himself is in the cafe and man i can get crazy wordy about it but (laughs) he got three f's to apply so daniel you know the deal we are going to forgive focus and fly so that we can keep growing. And I'm sure you can teach us a thing or two about forgiveness. You're a much like us, right? You've, you've made it to the heights that you have. Once you let go of the weight of forgiveness, even against your own father here on earth. And that's something that we honor and we appreciate, and we're going to dig into, but car guys, car gals, join us as we do it right now. Join as we forgive, focus and fly, put the hands over the, put them on the shoulders. 
And then we're going to wipe it off on three. One, two, three. Forgive. Forgive. Focus. Focus. And fly. fly. And keep growing. Keep growing. <laughs> keep growing. <laughs> Let's, Woo! Let's make you know, this happen, man. You know what, Lou, man? I, I love the way this is opening up because the one thing that holds everybody back in life, and we don't even realize it, is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is going to hold you back more than you realize because you carry that shame. You carry that guilt. You carry that. And it's, it's just like going through life. Imagine that we're going to the store and we're on bicycles and we have an 80 pound bag of potato sack on our back. That's going to slow you down. And that analogy of us going to the store on our bicycle, guess what? That potato sack, 80 pounds of potatoes, it's going to slow us down. That's the same way unforgiveness is holding you back in life right now. It's holding you back in your business because it strengthens the capacity to think to think when, from a capacity of, of just abundance, of increase. Because when you have unforgiveness in your heart, you go to your destructive mindset and nothing kills your life, nothing kills your business like a destructive mindset, Lou. And, and man, they, they, they don't realize that, guys. They don't realize that. And unforgiveness, I can tell you this. I, I used to get so angry all the time, and I was like, why the heck am I angry, right? I'm supposed to be this Christian guy, and I had a lot of unforgiveness towards my dad. And the thing is this, man, my dad was already passed away. And I'll tell you what, that's one thing that I had to come to a realization is, okay, well, the, the, pro- the problem was this. I had a, I, I couldn't connect here because my lateral relationship with my earthly father, man, I was mad at the dude So because the way he treated my mom. I loved him. But I'll tell you what, the moment I forgave them, guys, man, everything just changed. I can tell you that. That's right. Oh, I love how you use that analogy of 80-pound bag of potatoes on your back riding a bike. And it's uphill, by the way, folks. It's, that's what unforgiveness does to you. When you can't let that go, when you put all that weight on yourself, it's so hard to focus. It's so hard to fly to the future. You have to let that go, all that unforgiveness. Forgive. Yeah, and, and you know what's harder than forgiving my old man <laughs> was forgiving myself. That's right. Oh. You know, I, I, I carried so much shame. You know, when, when my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer four years ago, man, it just like it broke my heart because I was, uh, you know, I, I was making a lot of money running Chevrolet dealership and we had our house paid off. Money wasn't an issue. Monetary wasn't an issue. But I was taking care of my work family more than I was taking care of my home family, man. And I can tell you when I was on the phone, I couldn't understand what the heck she was saying. She was crying. I said, hey, chill out. Give yourself a minute. And all I heard was the word breast cancer come across that phone and it changed my life forever. And the moment I was there, you know, as I really pondered on this, because I ended up resigning from running a store and it just, I said, man, what good does it do me to, to hire somebody for my wife? If I go, that's my job. That's my responsibility as a man. And so many of us men, we're not manning up right now, right? We're not letting, we're not being the leaders. We're not being the men of the household because we carry that shame. We carry that guilt. Your kids need you. Your wife needs you. Not just the dealership. And I tell you what, the moment I, I, I really took a step back to really assess what the heck was happening in my life. And it took me about maybe three weeks after I left the dealership is that I was like, wow, I carried that. I felt guilty because I felt like, you know, I, I was I, I'm under, I, when it comes to clothing the month, man, I tell you what, we were, we were making numbers, but I, I wanted to be the best. And I was the best. I was the best. We had a great team. But the thing is this, is that being the best, I would bring that attitude home and I would run my home. We were very profitable at home, like I did the dealership. And all they wanted was just their dad. And I realized that I felt ashamed and guilty because I felt that my wife was diagnosed, that she got breast cancer because of the fact that I suppressed her so much. I suppressed her. I didn't give her a voice in the home. And man, our wives need a place to speak at home. Man, I I love how you brought that full circle like that. That Wow. That's powerful, man, and and to take that and understand that and to use that and, and to share that story is, is powerful too, man. And that's deep, and you really touched me with that. I mean, I, our wives are very important to us, you know, and a lot of times we take them for granted because we are busy with work because we think we're doing the right thing by going to work every day, by bringing home the bacon, right? That's what I'm supposed to do as the man. I bring home the bacon. Well, we have to be supportive. We have to love our family. We have to give them more than just monetary stuff. Monetary stuff will come. But the love and the passion and, and, and that, that energy towards them is needed. It's needed that for a balanced life. You have to do that not just with your wife and your child, but you have to do it with your friends, your family, you, what's important to you. If you don't give everybody good focus, something's going to slip and disappear or you're going to, they're going to have no, not enough nutrition, if that makes sense. You know, I'm using analogy there. You know, they're just not going to, they're going to suffer 
you know, and, and that's that's the thing that makes it very hard as as businessmen, especially young business people. If you're out there watching and you're trying to get up in this business and you're so focused on, I'm going to grow this business. I'm going to get the best. I want to do this. And yes, you can do that. But don't forget about your friends. Don't forget about your family. Don't forget about those things. Because if you do, if you do, for one, they'll forget about you in their own little way. Two, it's <laughs> it makes it very difficult to get back with them in the later. You know, it's it's when you don't when you put people to the side, they're going to put you to the side eventually. They're going to make you less priority. And, and I'm not saying that that's the right that's a a bad thing in some cases. Sometimes it might be a good thing. But but what I mean by that is, in order for you to grow, you have to have a balanced life. You have to be able to appreciate all things that are important to you and you have to let them know that they're appreciated this way you can feel the energy because the more you give love the more you're going to get back it's it's a bottom line and 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 you bring that forth and you talk about that daniel and i appreciate that so and, and it's it's the the core focus for ourselves should be on one higher than us because mm, there you go be our there you own go standard to ourselves. there you right? go we're always trying uh to level up uh and fulfill what we're intentionally made to do and what we are to do inside of a marriage is complement the other complete fulfill right we are the connection piece to to that other one and and then it's the same thing in any other relationship uh it, you have there's a grace that's why it's a five letter word the word focus is a, is five letters which is the number of grace which again is something that we all lose on we all get our gaze caught we all get distracted right it, it's yeah not, it's and, and, but you know what the, you know what the problem is though is this is that right we're we're, we're so since we're kids we're taught to perform we're actually and, and, and I say this without respect because this was me too right we're taught to perform like circus animals we got to perform we got to do this we got to do that and we, we and the, and you're right we got the grace should come in but what happens when you don't give the grace the space that it needs right, right. you have to give the grace the space and the place in your life. And many of us, we're so used to performing, performing, performing. You start the month, you close the month, you open the month, you close the month, you open the month, you close the month. And you're so performance-based because you got that from childhood, right? If you don't get first place, you're no good. If you don't win a championship basketball game, you're no good. And, hey, you got to be first place. You got to be the best, be the best. And we're, we're, we ingrain this in our kids. And then we wonder where the relationships go because there's no relationship because we're so, we're so, we're so used to performing. And then we take that attitude to work. Right. And then we, we have employees that really – like are looking for a role model because they, especially now in today's market, it doesn't matter if you're in the car business because I do corporate trainings all over um, just different platforms. And, and I say that because what we don't realize right now is America, there's so many blended families, right? I want, you to, I, want, I want everybody to get this. There's so many blended families that you have a husband and a wife that have been divorced. Now they're coming together with new families. You have a D and you have a D daughter and a D son. One of those Ds is going to have to submit, right? So then they submit. Because the mom gives them a guilt trip to say, hey, you know what? Um, can I just be happy? Can I be happy for once? And they take it out on the kids. And then we wonder why our kids are hooked up on drugs or doing what they're doing because there's no family structure. There's no support. But if we really, if we really take back the step and realize that we don't have to perform like you're saying, right? And really give that place and that space for the grace of God. It's not, we don't earn this grace by works, man. The work clearly says that. It's, we, 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 but we don't know how, the thing is this, is as men, and I'm telling, I'm talking to myself. I was talking to myself for many months. I wasn't used to receiving that grace because we're so used to perform like a circus animal. And I'm talking about myself on that. Mm. And that's, and that's in all walks of life. And it turns into your business, turns into many different things. So I want to make sure that, that we do hone in on what we're saying here. If we, if you're taking notes, car guys, car gals, make sure that you turn your focus on what is most valuable. So when you do get focused in life, you do put the blinders on so that you're not tempted to look aside to something that's not going to usually we're saying doesn't pay me. But we forget that there's so much more value inside of people that it's not about profits. That's why we say people over profits. That's why we say relationship over revenue, because you have to focus and give your intentional focus on those that are valuable to you. Just yes. like everybody that's jumped inside of the cafe with oh, us real quick. We do have a lot of amazing people going. who jumped in this Let's morning. A lot of people fast. are sharing this and I appreciate it. Um, man, yeah, I want to throw a quick, a few shouts out to these comments that we've had this morning so far. You know, we have, I'm not sure it says Facebook user. Woo! Welcome back, Fred. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Amanda's on here. She's got some hand claps going. Thank you for being here, Amanda. Brian Norris. Love Brian Norris. What up, all you car guys and gals? Yes. 
Facebook user says, let's go. Charles Higgins, he got the coffee mug out there, man. That's my yeah. man. What's going on, Drive with Charles? We hit Brian again. We got Terry Torline up in the house. Good morning, Solutionaries. Ooh, we got Amanda. She's done shared this for us. Oh, God. Yes, my man. Russ, man. Russ. That's Russ. the dude right there. If you I am a successful business person. Woo-hoo. I love some Russ. No doubt. He's a great guy. I love your intro music. Gets Get going every time I hear it. That's right. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Wendy Reeves. Oh, hey, Wendy. Hey. What's up, girl? Good morning, beautiful people. Yes, good morning, Wendy. I appreciate you. She hit us with the Forgive Focus Fly. Brian Norris. I was born for success. Yes, yes you were. That's right. Repeat those words, my friend. And then, of course, oh. they're hitting us with the Forgive Focus Fly. Yeah, hashtag F3 and E. Right. Matt Damos in the house. The quality of your life. My, my, this is one of my greatest mentors right here. The quality of your life is defined by the quality of your relationships. Bam. Love it. Great, Bong, great, great Bong. words. Randy Poland says, awesome, guys. And then, of course, Another morning. Yes, Facebook good morning. User. So whoever this Facebook user is, I know there's a few of them on there. I do apologize. It's not me. It's StreamYard. StreamYard's still tweaking it out. They're getting it better. They but, hey, they have room for improvement, too, like oh. just like everybody in this world. <laughs> Daniel. Thank you so much. We're going to get into this five-liner. Daniel, I appreciate you for bringing all this amazing energy. I appreciate you for just dropping some great, as they would call it, nuggets, gems, whatever you want to call it on the clubhouse. But you are dropping those, and you've been dropping those for years. I love your story, man. I love where you're coming from. So I'm excited about hitting you with this five-liner because I really want to get to know you some more and exactly where you're coming from. So this first question for you, Daniel, it's my favorite question. It's what Simon Sinek says. It all starts with the why. So what is your why? What is your purpose? What drives you every single day, my friend? I would say that it's really just helping people that need help, man. Um, mm. You know, I, I know what it's like. You don't know what it's like to almost lose your wife. My son was my my, my son's my my son's my my little king, and um, of course I love all my kids, but my son Julian, man, uh, he just has a special place in my heart. And when I almost lost my wife, when she was stage two, when they diagnosed her with stage three, my daughter was a little bit older, but I was like, man, what are my kids going to do without their mom? And, and I really thought about my kids and my son and man my son is what motivates me my wife is my inspiration but I see my son I see you know people say how do you know what you do works Daniel I said because I see that it, I see it in my son my son is only 21 years old and he's already surpassed my success at his age he's going to graduate here from Texas State University and wow. you know he has things that I've never had because you know I never graduated from college I'm it's like you know, college ain't for everybody. And I just, God gave me that street hustle. I turned that street hustle into grind. And then I learned that I didn't have to grind, that I could walk in the grace of God. And, you know, one, one touch of God's favor is worth more than a lifetime of labor. Oh. God just really just accelerated my success. But I would say what really inspires me is my wife when she was, you know, going through her reconstruction surgery and, and she was getting up at 3.30 in the morning to still go to her, to her CrossFit I was like, what excuse do I have as a man not to go and do what I need to do in my business? Because I started actually, I started my business the same, same month when my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer. It, it kind of all came to fruition. People thought I was crazy, but, you know, I, I had to do what I, I thought I needed to do. And then now what motivates me is just seeing my son and my daughter too, right? They started their own little side hustle business and it gives me joy because people are going to laugh at you before they applaud you. Let me say that again. People are going to laugh at you before they applaud you. So and now, a, yeah, sorry to keep, I, there's going to be no, like, laugh like they're like that or they're yeah. like clowning you laugh. Yeah, I know they're clowning you, right? They're clowning right? you. They're going to laugh at you before they applaud you. But now that I see my kids, now that four years later, they're, they're doing their own thing, man, it motivates me even more because I see them striving farther than they than, than what I would what they would have if I wouldn't have done what I did and started my own business. Man, you showed them you showed them that it's anything is possible if you believe in yourself, you know, and and you and you have belief and you do and you have faith, of course, right? Mm-hmm. And and that's the power of being a, a parent, a, a power of a power of being somebody that people look up to, you know. So you have not just your children, and your wife, you have. A whole bunch of people across the country, not just in the car business. Like you said, you're an executive coach, man, and you help a lot of people through business, but also in personal, you know, and, and that's the beauty of that. It's just passing down a legacy and you're doing that with grace. You're doing it so amazingly and you've really found it through 
trials and tribulations. You know, you, you sometimes you sometimes things have to happen before we see them. And when you when you smelt it though, you you took it all in and you you drank that brew right up, man. And I appreciate you for sharing that story and, and appreciate you for sharing the love of your family like that. That's amazing, man. Um, and to have a why like that is going to drive you so far. I know you have a lot of things that motivate you that keep you going, and I know that you know. As time goes by, things change and motivation changes, but I do know that you have one purpose and that's to change your life and change other people's lives to the good. And, and that's beautiful, man. And what I, earlier, you know, you were talking about stuff and it's so key to, to understand that, you know, we grow up in the comp, you know, in competition, right? We always try to be better. You know, we're on a team. We want to be the best team. We want to do these things. But, you know, I think what you found and what we try to teach our children, what I try to teach my sons, don't worry about beating you know, this other kid, worry about being better than you were yesterday. That's it, man. Just, just keep yeah. going. Focus on how you could be the best version of yourself. Cause that's what all God wants you to do is be the best version of yourself. He didn't make us all exactly the same at all. We're all different and we're all individuals in our own way, right? We're supposed to be, or this world would be super boring. And I, I'm really thankful for that. Honestly, I am. And I, and I'm really thankful that I don't have to worry about being better than Lou or being better than you, Daniel. Only thing I have to worry about is being better than myself. And when I focus on that, I can, it's a lot less for me to worry about. I don't have to worry about the whole world. I just have to worry about me being better. This way I can pour into other people and help them be better. You know, and then it just keeps going and going. And then when you worry about other people helping other people like you do, being a servant leader, next thing you know, it goes a long way. And you're just, you've, years go by and all of a sudden you're, you know, an award-winning executive coach. <laughs> And, and, and that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. What a great, what a great story, bro. Seriously, you know, I love you. Why? It's awesome. And, and, and the beautiful thing about it is the moment you come to the realization, kind of going back from what you said about performance is that, you know, I was doing it. I was, I was, I was getting results. I was getting traction. And, and one day God just finally said, are you going to stop being busy doing nothing? Mm. So I, I said, what do you mean? He goes, yeah, like, you're going to run this company or am I going to run this company? And I, 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 you know, I just, didn't know what to say. He goes, you're, 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 work, you're, you're working when you don't have to work as hard. And he goes, am I going to be the CEO or are you going to be the CEO? Because if you're going to be the CEO, then you can do it your way. And I'll tell you, the moment I just really, you look at my, my clubhouse bio, I put God as my CEO. I mean, he is. That's why my title my, on, on LinkedIn is president because as a joke, I said, well, can I be the president at least? He goes, you can be anything you, can be anything you want, but you're not going to be the CEO if you want it to go far. And I can tell you the moment I really changed that on, on LinkedIn to president, man, our, our sales went up like 15% that next month and they've been going up ever since. And wow. now, now we have, you know, we have more products. We're responsible for more people because we have a lot of, you know, um, employees that we take care of. Now we went from no one employees to now we have three. So it's really a responsibility that I carry, but that happened when I really allowed, like Lou was saying, the grace of God to come in. And most of us, we don't, allow ourselves to spend time with the father and then we wonder why our business is going crazy we wonder why our life is going crazy wow that's powerful stuff yeah put that in your cup and sip on it sip on that matter of fact take a big gulp of that because you, you need good, to good, good. <laughs> everybody needs to get some of that inside of them because it penetrates the heart and it's doing things from the heart yes. right selling from the heart honoring people from the heart looking towards your family and your relationships by way of the heart mm. and the heart is an overflowing vessel of what it is that heaven wants to actually do. The core of you, your true spirit man, wants to pour something out into this earth that's only going to come through your hands. It's only going to come through you. And you have been chosen for this time to be a vessel of that. And we're thankful that we get the chance to sip on it. And, and it's it's permeating all over the industry. Uh, so many people are saying so, so many great things. Again, I was referred to you by somebody that just heard us speak inside of a room. And then they said, man, you need to speak to Daniel Gomez because uh, there's somebody that's talking like you. Then I looked at and I watched and I saw what you were doing. I was like, this is like a big brother to us. That is doing what we're doing. That was the first thing Lou said. I think he's my long lost brother. I don't know. (laughs) Boom, baby. Last week when he was like, oh, yeah, we're going to be interviewing Daniel. I was like, oh, cool. After talking to him, dude, that's like my brother. I don't know. I think think he's like my long lost brother, really. (laughs) And you might be. I mean, you're kind of the earth you know we might be connected some way but uh but uh, there is that mayan blood in me uh but uh inside of that i want to i want to kick into some origins 
um, because there's so many places that we can take this conversation and all of the, the things that you said and that you're pouring out. The key pieces of all of it, folks, is that he is firmly planted in who he is in doing everything that he does. Right. When he activated his faith towards building his business in the face of it, the biggest adversity of his life and his wife's life, they look looked at it together, held on to the hand of a leading father, demoted themselves down to saying, you lead me, I go where you say. <coughs> and then you hear him saying, I humbled myself, took a, took a demotion in title, right? We just changed a couple of letters in the title underneath your name, which remember, car guys, car gals, solutionaries out there, your title does not define you. Your father does. Your Boom, father baby. Woo! For you, okay? So it, that's why we love everybody. We don't care about your title. We care about what, that the, the same father that's in love with me is in love with you, and I should love you too. And, and so with that, we found a love for a business. We found a, a connection point inside of an industry that is mucked with lying, cheating, stealing, unfaithfulness, disloyalty, the darkness. I can't tell you how many people gave side looks when saying that Lou's a car salesman, Fred's a car salesman. Mm. And we took that with, you don't know what car dealing's like until you actually deal with us. If you've seen it bad, well, you need to see what it looks like to see it good. We've been trying to kill this stigma. We've been trying to slay that, that understanding. And the best way that we've done it is not by pointing at the problem. It's just by turning on our light, glowing the best that we can and doing it as right as we can before God, our family, and the people that we get to serve. Mm -hmm. But brother, you've come into this business, seen it all, enjoyed it all, and uh, and mucked through it all. Brother, what brought you to the car business?